This is the Fifth Estate, a conversation between young African scholars from the Fort Hall School of Government and Professor Mutahi Nguni. This being the end of year, we will give a report card and we will begin with Raila. Whether you support him or not, this man is a political genius. He is a genius at doing everything right, except winning elections. And for effort, we give Baba a generous score of A+. This man tries and God knows he does. If it was not for witchcraft, Ryla would be president today. And Ryla was even described by Jesus. Jesus asked a question to his disciples. What kind of a father, if asked by his child to give him bread, gives him a stone? What kind of a father, if asked by a child to give him a fish, gives him a snake? And that person is Ryla. Instead of giving bread to his supporters, he gives them stones. When they ask for fish, he gives them snakes marinated in witchcraft. This is why we give him an A plus for effort and E minus for achievement. He is going to Bondo Express. Now we will give a grade to Justice Maraga. They call him Jurist of the Year, African Hero of the Earth, and all manner of big names. Even President Uhuru seems to have forgiven him. But we are not persuaded by this Maraga man. We think he is a political snake. His boldness gets an A- minus from us, but his logic gets a D+. Plus. To say that process is more important than results falls way below the levels of political nonsense. And for this nonsense, we give Maraga a D+. Plus. And we do so because Maraga inspired rebellion. He inspired the Nairobi business community. He inspired the revival of Mungiki. But he also inspired crude rebellions like that of Babu Awino. Similarly, Maraga's convulated courage created a girl called Apombe, or whatever her name was. If Maraga had not ruled the way he did, Apombe would not have resigned from IABC. And for inspiring this sin of rebellion, Maraga must be condemned as a traitor of country. This is why we will revise his grade of a D plus to an E minus. We do not trust this man. Now we will give a grade for President Uhuru. But before we do so, we will tell him that it does not pay to be nice to Maraga. And we will use a story to illustrate this. Once upon a time, a snake in danger asked a farmer to save its life. The farmer agreed and allowed the poisonous reptile to crawl into his belly. But when the danger had passed, the snake refused to come out. And so the farmer had to look for a way of ejecting it. On his way home, he asked a heron for help. And the bird pulled out the snake and killed it promptly. But the farmer was worried about the snake's poison in his body. To this, the bird told him to eat six healthy herons to remove the poison. Good idea. The farmer quipped, and since you are a heron, I will start with you. He grabbed the poor bird, put it in a bag, and went home to cook it. At home, he narrated the story to his wife, who was horrified by his cruelty. In a rage of anger, she released the poor bird, and it flew away to freedom. But before it took off, it turned on her and plucked her eyes out. Sometimes, it doesn't pay to be nice. Maraga is the snake of misfortune in this story. If Uhuru carries him in his belly because of kindness, Maraga will attract misfortunes to him. Before engaging with him, Maraga should tell us what he was doing in Lithuania after nullifying the August 8th election. He should tell us why fake documents were used to nullify the August 8th election. He should tell us why he convened an aborted Supreme Court session on the 25th of October. Did he want to cancel the election? For dealing softly with this cabal of cool makers, we give Uhuru the mean score of B- on firmness. In our view, Uhuru should emulate former Ghanaian president Jerry Rawlings. This man was permanently irritated. One day, his vice president started talking nyoko nyoko during a cabinet meeting. Irritated by this, Rawlings stood up and beat him up thoroughly. 
Then the VP drove to the police station and reported the president. The officer who recorded the statement did nothing. He was promoted that afternoon for acting swiftly. Because Uhuru is a Christian and not a military man, he cannot beat up Maraga and the co-makers. But we expect a bit more action from him in the second term. My view of President Uhuru is different. As Thomas Hobbes taught us, when two men desire something and only one can get it, the two must fight. And this is what happened on August 8th. Uhuru and Raila fought for the presidency. Uhuru won. But Maraga nullified the victory because Uhuru was wearing a short sleeve shirt instead of a long sleeve shirt. The reasons were that ridiculous. By taking in the pain and injustice, Uhuru put the country ahead of self. He knew there would be tension in the country, but he guided us through with his patience and obedience to the law. If this nullification had been done to Jerry Rawlings or Yoweri Museveni, Maraga would have been court-martialed for a fact. But there's one more thing. Raila's political career is over. It is finito. It is Bondo Express. And Uhuru did this without too much drama. So, for Uhuru's show of statesmanship, we give him an A+. For finishing Raila, we give Uhuru an A-. minus, And we deny him a full A because Uhuru has a good heart. He will reach out to Raila in Bondo. Now, we will grade the bearded sisters of NASA. We will give them a generous B- minus for misusing the genius of Baba. Shame on them. They are like the foolish assistants of this Nigerian general who was appointed Minister of Education after a coup. Keen to establish the standards of education in the country, the general visited a secondary school. Once there, he stormed into one of the classes and pointed at a random student and asked, You, who wrote Macbeth? The trembling student said he did not know. Disappointed, the general turned to another random student and asked, You, who wrote Macbeth? The terrified student said he did not know either, but he assured the general that he is not the one who wrote Macbeth. It wasn't me. The general left the school a sad man. But in the morning, the foolish assistants of the general brought him some good news. They told him that after torturing a few suspects, one of them confessed writing Macbeth and we executed him immediately. To this shocking news, the general screamed in total disbelief. The answer the general had wanted was a simple one. Macbeth was written by William Shakespeare. It is a play used as a secondary school set book. The bearded sisters of Nasser are like the foolish assistants of this Nigerian general. When Raila asked the crowd who wrote Macbeth, the bearded sisters thought that he was asking for someone to be tortured and executed. And this is why they have executed so many people, including children, in order to please Raila. Yet this is not what Raila wanted. Raila did not want to boycott the election. In fact, if he had not boycotted the election and he got 45% of the vote on October 26th, a coalition government would have been inevitable in my view. But this was not good for the bearded sisters and their future. And that is the reason why they had to botch it. Then these foolish sisters advised Raila to swear himself in. They knew that this was high treason. But they also knew that Raila would cancel the swearing in. And if he did it, this would take him many years to recover. Yet they did it to embarrass Raila. Now this careless case of one bad decision after another was not an accident, it was sheer mischief in my view. But Raila will have the last laugh on the bearded sisters. He will roast them one by one in my view. The matter is not whether he will do it or not, the question is when he will do it. And now, our final thought. 
Although we have given Uhuru a generous grade of A- for finishing Raila with tact, he must finish what he started. For the last four years, Raila has disorganized Uhuru with menacing pleasure. He has peed on every good intention Uhuru has for this country. If allowed to regroup, Raila will be twice as menacing, twice as poisonous to our national psyche. Uhuru must therefore destroy Raila with finality. He must show him no mercy, for he shall receive none from Raila. He must make no covenants with Raila. For if the Maraga coup had succeeded, they would have dealt with Uhuru ruthlessly. And as Machiavelli taught us, such men should either be accommodated in full or destroyed in totality. There is no middle ground. You cannot do an enemy a small injury. When you injure an enemy, your injury should be so severe that you are not afraid of his vengeance. And this is how Uhuru should deal with Raila. Amen.